You're watching Strictly Security. Thank you for staying with us. Like every year in our region, the new year 2020 promises to be at least as challenging as the year that's passed. So I'd like to welcome the commander of the Israeli Border Police, Major General Yaakov Shabtai, to discuss some of those challenges in this coming year. Uh, gentlemen, thank you very much for joining me. Before we get to the coming year, I'd like to start by summing up the year that's passed. What would be the headline of 2019 from your angle? Let's start with anti-terrorism activity, which is our main objective. We've had much success in this field, whether it is our special units like Yamam or other units. Connectivity is key. We do not operate in a bubble. We work in cooperation with other security bodies like the Shin Bet and the IDF. So we had a relatively quiet year in which we managed to foil many attacks that otherwise would have placed us in a very different situation. Like I said, counterterrorism activity was our primary focus this year, but the border police operates in other fields as well. One of those fields is agricultural crime, and we have been successful in reducing annual crime rates in this sphere. We are operating on a daily basis, whether it's counterterrorism missions or regular criminal activity. We are out here every night making arrests, foiling terror attacks that were supposed to be carried out immediately. Be it a lone wolf or a group or an organized terror cell with ties to Gaza and other places outside of Israel. We have special units operating the West Bank daily under the IDF authority, and when the situation escalates, we bring in our special units, like Yamam and our undercover agents, Mistar Avim. Overall, our activity is daily and very intense. One example unveiled only in the last few weeks is the activity that led to the arrest of the terrorists involved in the murder of an Israeli teen, Rina Schnerb, and helped fall a number of planned assaults by a large a group of popular front members in the area. That is correct. It's an incident that started with much that was unknown. In a sense, it caught us by surprise. We had no warnings or initial information. But from the moment everyone got involved, following the Israeli police forensics unit's initial report that got us started, we were able to make arrests and interview suspects and eventually peel more layers of this onion, so to speak. We reached almost 50 members of this terror group. We found a large amount of weapons that could definitely be used for large-scale attacks on Israeli citizens. Eventually, it was the cooperation between the special units of the Israeli police, the IDF, and the Shin Bet that got the job done. And still, the main threat is Hamas, and I am assuming it, will, it won't change in 2020. If we are talking about organization on the ground, then I agree. They obviously have an interest in escalating the situation. We see it every day. I agree with the statement that our routine work focuses mainly on Hamas. One surprising fact about the West Bank is the fact that the general public does not seem to care at all about what's going on there. Uh, things like mass protests seem to be out of the table. It does not mean that there aren't any. There are minor disturbances, much fewer though than in the past. It spikes occasionally on certain landmark dates or political events that affect the street. I think we have created a new situation on the ground. We do our best to end these events with no casualties, because if you have casualties, the situation can escalate quickly. So we use non-lethal weapons, and I think that has much to do with our success in this field. 
ולעשות את העבודה בצורה מקצועית, ולדעתי זה גם חלק מהדברים שמצליח לדכא את ההפרות סדר. We became involved almost one year ago. Balloons from Gaza burned much of the fields close to the border. Some balloons reached as far as Jerusalem. Now we see the same thing evolve into drones. We made a decision to get involved because this escalated beyond the IDF's jurisdiction and the Israeli police needed to step it up. So we joined hands with several scientists like Professor Rami Ishayahu from Ben Gurion University and others. It began with just good old Zionism and evolved into a laser system that is able to shoot down any balloon or kite and at this stage a partial solution for the drone problem. And this system does not endanger our planes and helicopters at all? The advantage of this system is that it has no collateral damage. It can target all the targets that it's designed for without putting other vehicles around it in danger. The IDF is uh, physically in charge of the border fence area, but border police is the second life inside the communities. So there is a unique mix of uh, civilians and security forces. You are in the middle of it all. We call it layers. So there's the layer of the actual borders, which are IDF's responsibility. There's the area that's between the IDF and the police, in which we work together. We exchange intelligence that is eventually used by our special units. And then there's the day-to-day -day police activity in the community. We keep police forces that are trained to respond to any threat on call at all times. Earlier, you mentioned two other aspects of your daily work. One is regular criminal activity, and the other is uh, agricultural crime. What is it? What exactly is it? I'll divide it into two. Firstly, the border police is the operational arm of the Israeli police force. What is happening with agricultural crime, which is under the responsibility of the border police. The traditional police force is busy working inside the cities and protecting the rural areas. That's largely our job. Agricultural criminals target farmers in remote places and cause a lot of damage. In the past, we used to have routine patrols of specially trained units like Yamar. In the last two years, we upgraded their abilities by introducing cyber tools. We created a cyber warfare center that allows us to switch from fishing to hunting. If in the past, we used to deploy forces all around the country, hoping to catch a potential lead, today, we are focused on these gangs and we are able to handle them using cutting-edge technology, and our success rate here is absolutely incredible. There is an ongoing debate here in Israel on the issue of female soldiers in combat units in the IDF. The border police was way ahead in this sense with women activity, like the army in the border police, uh, which you command, it's practically a non-issue, right? Indeed, we started back in 1995 with former Magav commander Israel Sadan, who initiated this project, and it's only grown since. Today, in every draft, we have at least two platoons of female fighters who compose a third of our fighting force. Women are everywhere in the border police. We have a slightly different texture than other security bodies, and that allows this synergy to thrive and for us to enjoy the benefits that women are bringing to our units. Thank you very much for being here today. Thank you, sir.